So now we come to George Van Tassel. Uh, George Van Tassel basically claimed he talked to the space people. So that kind of, uh, it doesn't help your credibility in a subject like this. But the thing is, uh, is I was supposed to be in the sequence of things the person to complete the Integratron. And I had to learn how it operated and uh, deal with it scientifically and, and not believe anybody's story or not care about it or not be concerned if they're space people or not. As an engineer, I wanted to make it work. First, I had to figure out how it worked or why it worked. Uh, I didn't care if it talked to aliens. I didn't care if it cured people of uh, whatever, like they said it was. All I knew is the thing had a frequency, it had a wavelength, and it had an impedance. So it became a valid study device, and it was giant. Uh, unfortunately, when I finally figured out how to assemble the whole thing and the materials all presented themselves and the, the voodoo behind it was intense, everything would just show up. It was definitely a, how would you say, a divine ordained project, but uh, the people on the other side, the women in white, not the men in black, the women in white came and they embezzled the property and screwed the whole thing up and presently occupy it. And in fact, uh, even had something to do with the destruction of my Mojave Research Facility. Uh, they're referred to as the girls, they're very cute. So here's, uh, here's Van Tassel's four quadrant view of how the Earth's internal electrical and magnetic system work. It's very detailed. It contains all kinds of interesting attributes and aspects uh, that directly apply to things that are seemingly taken for granted in electrical engineering. The connection is, is almost exact. Also, uh, uh, there's other things too we'll find out that this is connected to. So he had his four quadrant uh, theory about the interaction of the sun and the earth and the moon. And his integratron was based on all these things. Uh, this one, uh, this is the one that we're gonna be particularly dealing with because we're gonna use the Earth and Moon is our Tesla motor. Uh, the analogy is, is almost exact. So here we have the basic rotational systems, forces and counter forces and the vectors. And, and I'm not gonna get any detailed explanation of this, but Van Tassel wrote a book called When Stars Look Down, that's where these are out of. And he presents his whole four quadrant theory, uh, explains all this stuff, ties it into a lot of different things and uh, shows how this is the basic uh, math or operating principle behind this Integratron, which is a very interesting device. So this is the, this would be the Integratron as it exists today. Uh, there's electrical connection to it, which is not supposed to happen. The thing's all electrostatic. The rotor's all screwed up. Uh, the transformer winds have been torn out. The compressor plant is gone, and it's filled with people's junk. So right now it's being used as a uh, goddess worship temple. So this is the inside of it presently with their, whatever, their living room furniture. Uh, and then we're looking at the ceiling of uh, the lower floor of the structure and the central column. And these two structures we're looking at will reveal themselves here shortly as to exactly what part they play in all this. But this is the lower level of the building. And this is the upper level of the building. So as far as a groovy pad go, you know, who wants transformers and wires? You know, we just pull all that out and uh, make this our spiritual home so the spirits of Lucifer can come to Earth. But if Van Tassel had it, I'm afraid maybe some other people might have come to Earth. Because the Integratron was a space scalar device, so it could very easily, if you had one on Moon and one on Earth, when you walked in the one, you would walk out the other. But that's all speculative. But uh, mathematically, this thing is a friend of mine, Philo Farnsworth, used to like to say, smells like it. <laughs> so this is kind of the structural integratron. You can see the downstairs. Uh, there's two doors in quadrature. You walk in one and you walk out the other of one of the quadrants shown in the previous diagrams. And your body was back, brought back to it, the uh, vitality of its original day of birth so that you would live, time-wise, your life over again. That was the claimed uh, function of the Integratron. 
if you walked into the opposite quadrant, well, then, you know, you'd be burnt bacon fat all over the ceiling. <laughs> and uh, no one really knew what would happen in between, but it'd probably be best to stay out of those places. <laughs> so uh, you, can, you can get an idea now, the dome, the floor, uh, one door. So now this is the transformer uh, windings on the ceiling. Uh, they tore all my wire down and put something else up. It was supposed to be two coils in opposite directions. It was 90 turns, 5,000 feet of wire on each coil, 14 gauge insulated iron wire for one coil, 10 gauge insulated copper wire for the other coil, which was in the op rotating in the opposite direction. Uh, the column had other functions. This is the basic configuration. Geometrically, it'd be a little more symmetrical than that. It wouldn't tend to be offset, or, but this is just a computer generation. But we're dealing with a four-terminal transformer that has two terminals on the column and two terminals that connect to the periphery of the dome. And their exact phase relation uh, right now is arbitrary. So we can't, the diagram is purely schematic. So the basic power plant of the thing is a Immense die rod considered one of the, this thing was considered to be one of the biggest electrostatic rotary types to be in existence. Uh, their downfall is they really couldn't get the rotor to run the way they wanted to. Uh, there could be nothing metal in the Integratron. There was no screws or nails or any of that stuff. The paint on the dome had to be dielectric. Uh, the inside of the dome was, was to be covered with aluminum foil. And then the rotating electrostatic machine would charge up that dome, and then that would lock to the ionosphere, which is locked to the interplanetary electrostatic field. So this is the basic charging mechanism. Uh, the overvoltage spark gap is at the top. It's kind of a novel design. It's two propane cylinders pointing at each other. <laughs> okay. So now this generator has a quadrupolar arrangement of uh, of charge collectors and condenser balls. Uh, two on one line connect to the dome, two on the other line connect to the transformer coil. There's a switching arrangement driven by compressed air, insulated plastic compressed air lines that run to an external time function generator and then when the thing builds up charge it starts to do a commutation between the transformer the generator, and the dome in some specific switching pattern that, uh, that I was not able to identify, but everything was there to do it. This is a close view of one of the charge collectors. There's a um, piece of semiconducting material that hangs down the little upside bowl and touches each charge bar as it goes by and can diverts the electrostatic lines of force into the ball which charges it, and then the switching mechanism inside conveys that to the metallic dome, and you can see there's some aluminum foil glued on the dome inside here of the model in the, uh, what would be called the terminal condenser. In a certain sense, uh, it's a, it's, the operation of this is somewhat similar to uh, either Tesla's Wardenclyffe tower or his, his so-called death ray. It's kind of like uh, in between, one's AC and one's DC. This, this leans a little more towards the DC side, which would be the death ray. So this, is the, this shows how the, the spark gaps are arranged. So when the air-driven switch is engaged, then the spark gap fires and then commutates one of the four poles to either the transformer or the dome. And then this shows that basic quadrupolar relationship. Now the axis of this whole thing was set at a hysteresis angle of 22.5 degrees with respect to the north-south pole of the Earth. And apparently that phase shift was necessary in order to get the thing to start churning what it was supposed to do. But you know, needless to say, there wasn't a lot of details in this project. This is a working model of a die rod electrostatic generator. So you can kind of see what the little projections are doing. And then the four poles are shorted out by the copper pipe in this particular application. Uh, the advantage of the die rod generator is it doesn't require two counter-rotating structures, which would be a nightmare to build, because uh, the dome is 55 feet wide and 30 feet high. 
So we go to the central column. Uh, there's pegs on the column. Uh, one set of, of uh, pegs are in the red band, and another set of pegs are in the yellow band on the other side. And each of the wires, the iron or the copper, uh, zigzags down these pegs and makes a capacitor plate on each side of the central column. And that is the other end of the system where the electrostatic generator commutates to the dome, commutates to the coil, the commutation of the coil terminates in this place where we're looking at as a capacitor that sits as the central structure of the dome. This shows how the windings come down, and there's the yellow stripe pegs. So if that was the iron or copper, it would zigzag down those pegs, and the zigzagging kills the inductance, so what you have is a capacitor plate. And there's one on the other side on the opposite pole, the transformer. This, kind of, this shows a vertical view of the zigzags as you're coming down on the red side. Uh, there's a hatch up above, and there was a network that was to be dropped down on the column, and apparently the aliens uh, stopped providing information at that point, so nobody knows uh, Van Tassel was cut off, and what goes down in there uh, was an unknown variable. So basically, as far as the uh, voodoo forces went, I was su apparently supposed to complete the downstairs, uh, figure out the electrostatic connections, get the aluminum on the dome, and get the power supply running, and get the transformer energized. And right at that time, the magic person would show up, uh, because that's how this whole thing operated right from the beginning. I didn't even want to get roped into it, but it had a vortex that there was no escaping it. I ended up there whether I liked it or not. Uh, here's Van Tassel himself. Uh, they're all kind of looking shifty. <laughs> <laughs> they're tricking somebody. Uh, so, of course, as an engineer, I have to say the whole thing was a dog and pony show. Uh, but it probably makes some interesting waveforms and burn out your laptop. Uh, as, a, as a side interest, uh, unique to this particular neighborhood right now, uh, is Van Tassel had assembled your typical useless cardboard tube Tesla coil that has no relation to anything that Tesla was doing whatsoever. So uh, the, the guy that had taken custody of the dome and had sought me out as the engineer uh, brought me, you know, showed me this thing, and of course I immediately told him it was a piece of shit. Uh, it produced, uh, you know, maybe a, a discharge about that long off a neon sign transformer that almost took two people to live. I did, or lift. I didn't know they made them that big. I think it was 100 MA or something. And the glass plates, you know, and the whole thing. So what I did is I told Lockwood, I go, well, watch. Uh, so I got rid of the cardboard tube thing, yanked it out, um, took the secondary, and... Uh, I think I added a few more turns and I used copper wire and uh, this became the first pull of what now is known as the cosmic induction generator. Any of those uh, pictures you've seen or whatever of that device that I made the formations in the light bulb or whatever, this is where half of it came from. And then what I did is the cardboard tube was jettisoned, I pulled the end caps off of it and made another structure that looks like the one you're looking at in proportion and with the same power supply down below and no giant cardboard tube, I was getting discharges that long. So that basically is, is a side note. 